Ah, the episode that kicked off the series that made Gordon Ramsay a household name in America, Kitchen Nightmares. The British chef came, saw, and seasoned his way through America's most disastrous restaurants, starting with Peter's Italian Restaurant. The first episode was like a culinary clash of cultures. Could Ramsay's British sensibilities save an Italian restaurant in America, run by a guy with the temperament of a bull in a china shop? We'll take a look at whatever happened to Peter, both the man and the restaurant, after the episode aired. His story takes a crazy twist, so you won't want to miss this one. At the beginning of this adventure, we travel to Babylon, New York, to meet Pete's, an Italian restaurant owned by Tina Pellegrino. But for some reason, the place is named after her brother, Peter, the host who spends most of his days pretending to be a major mobster, as he suffers from fits of rage against the staff and the customers. Come on, let me hug it out. Will you? Let's hug it out. Let's hug it out. But at the end of the day, he's a nice guy. He's just passionate about some things. While Peter is more concerned about his appearance, head chef Robert and his colleagues are having a thousand problems in the kitchen where they're working with very low quality equipment. So far, Tina has had to deal with all these misfortunes on her own, but debts are starting to drown her. So she had no choice but to call Chef Ramsay. Although at this point, Gordon hadn't even got into the restaurant yet. Peter had promised to pick him up, but well, he's nowhere to be found. After waiting for an hour, Peter finally arrives with a fancy car as if it's nothing. Although at least he got out of the car to greet him. Mom, Dad, this is Gordon Ramsay. It seems weird to have to introduce Gordon Ramsay, but we have to remember back in 2007, Chef Ramsay was not a household name in America yet. At that point, Chef Ramsay deduces that the restaurant is a family business, and in theory, it is. But in practice, it's anything but. After that, Gordon gets his first dish, crab cakes although he decides to return the salad because it was rotten. The crab cakes themselves were also disappointing, as they were cold. As for the lobster ravioli, one of Chef Ramsay's favorite dishes, it looks more like baby food and has too much parsley. When waiter Angelo brings that news to the kitchen, they get into such a loud discussion that I can't even make out what the heck they're saying. The same situation is repeated when Ramsay sits down with the Pellegrino family. As you can see, no one likes to take the blame in this place. The next day, Ramsay inspects the kitchen, finding loaves of bread as hard as a rock and rotting vegetables in the fridge. In addition, the ceiling of the fridge leaks water like a cascade. Despite the terrible state of the food, Peter believed that is the chef's responsibility so he refuses to be blamed. Still, Gordon forces him to clean the fridge and the kitchen, but Peter prefers that his colleagues do it. At dinner service, Peter worries that they're not getting enough customers, though Gordon begins to realize that he actually cares more about how he looks. I'd rather buy a new <laughs> stove. <laughs> Take that, Pete. In the kitchen, Gordon Ramsay sees the precarious conditions in which the staff works. They even use a damaged oven for storage. According to Robert Elf, the owners have not invested a single dollar in new equipment. For that reason, the orders start to delay, and the waiters become impatient. So Robert deals with the situation as best as he can, by yelling. Meanwhile, Peter spends more money buying bottles for his regular doctor, justifying that it's just business. I think they said that in The Godfather. This guy is living in a movie, but hasn't yet realized he's not the main character. Apparently, Peter's expenses are bigger than we thought, as he gets an unexpected visit from a friend he owed money to. Peter promptly throws him out of the restaurant, and they end up arguing in the middle of the street. Fortunately, the argument only stays as a shouting match, but that alone is enough to give Ramsay a bad impression. So, he decides to talk privately with Tina, who confesses that no one respects her as the owner, and Peter takes money from the restaurant whenever he wants. That situation has long been unattainable for her, and her own home is at risk. Then, Ramsay gathers the Pellegrino family together to remind them that Peter's opened 17 years ago, and they must recapture the old glory of those days, but first, they must strengthen their family ties. As part of that plan, Ramsay orders Peter and his father, Yogi, to work together in the kitchen. 
If Peter's culinary skills are already mediocre enough, it gets worse when he learns that almost nothing works in the kitchen, while Ramsay welcomes many diners. Where are the clams? Where's the salmon? Where's my lemon? Too many wares and not enough. I'm going to find that, Peter. The worst part is that most of the ingredients were right under his nose and he didn't realize it. After an hour's wait for the diners, Ramsay returns to the kitchen to hurry everyone along, though Peter starts to get annoyed by his attitude. I want to see what big boy's made of. Come on. And of course, Ramsay doesn't cower to anyone. Finally, Gordon shows Peter how terrible it is to work in the kitchen, returning the position to Robert. After that, he can continue the renovation plan, acquiring new equipment for the kitchen. Even the dishes and utensils are new. Everyone is happy with these changes and is motivated to do their best at work. Even Peter looks happy. As for the new menu, Ramsay works side by side with Robert and sous chef John to show them how to cook it. The new dishes consist of good old fashioned Italian cuisine that will make Peter stand out from the competition in Babylon. And yes, Peter is committed to the cause. Peter even hugs Gordon. Before the relaunch, Gordon prepares to give his usual motivational talk, but then they are visited by another bill collector, whom Ramsey himself tries to throw out to keep Peter from exploding with rage. I hate you, big. Spoiler, Ramsey couldn't stop him, so it took almost the entire staff to restrain Peter so he doesn't end up committing a crime, though his poor father almost ends up becoming the victim of the fight. After several employees put him back in the restaurant, Peter was still upset, threatening to send his friends to that bill collector's house. I'm starting to think Peter might actually be a legit mobster instead of a wannabe. We'll see though. So Gordon invites him to go for a walk to get some fresh air, reminding him that he's there to help but needs him to calm down. After that, Ramsey can resume his motivational talk to the rest of the staff, preparing them for the relaunch. Thanks to the new equipment, the kitchen is going great, while the restaurant is full for the first time in seven years. However, Peter prefers to sit at the bar and order some drinks to take care of his blood sugar levels. He's a prudent man, isn't he? Angelo had to send him to deliver some appetizers, but instead of doing that, Peter starts eating them. Seeing that, Ramsey kicks him out of his own kitchen. It was harder than the gym. It was really harder than the gym. What was hard, Peter? Eating? But on second thought, it was better that he was sitting around doing nothing because when he finally recognized that the dishes were taking a while to come out, he decides to blame Nicole, a waitress who was just doing her job. Nicole ends up crying in the kitchen, accusing Peter of being too cruel, but of course, he thinks she's overreacting. Beyond that situation, the relaunch is a total success with over 200 happy customers, despite Peter. So Ramsey scolds him in front of the staff. Problem. What's, the pro what's, the what's the problem? What's the problem? You. That's where I'm starting. Peter doesn't take that criticism well, though Ramsey continues his argument, hailing that the restaurant would be better off without him. Yikes! Imagine getting kicked out of the restaurant that's named after you. After that, they have a private chat in which Gordon advises him to come back tomorrow with better ideas for the business. This place is me. This place is me. This is me. This is what I do, so I gotta make it work. Aside from his gigantic ego, I'm glad Peter got the message. And they weren't empty words, because the next day, the first thing he did was repair the leak in the fridge. On the other hand, the family-style food continues to attract many customers and, of course, profits. To multiply that effect, Peters creates the first family day festival for the local people in Babylon, resulting in an event that even Chef Ramsay enjoys himself. As a last step, Peter called a priest to bless the restaurant. Because you know, a baptism is like a rebirth. Peter continued with that good attitude in the following weeks, staying active in the business and making peace with Nicole and his sister, especially Peter. My first son is gonna be named after Gordon, Gordon Ramsay Pellegrino. Okay, Peter, I think you're taking it a bit too far, but I'd rather you're happy than exploding with rage. But was the new kitchen and Peter's dedication enough to keep the business afloat? What happened to Peter's after the show? Unfortunately, the priest's blessing didn't last long as Peter's closed in December of 2008. It's hard to know if it was because of the reviews because while there are many rumors that the restaurant's reputation did not improve after Ramsay's visit, I can't find the sources beyond a fake Yelp profile. 
But off the record, there is information that could explain the restaurant's closure. Remember how Peter used to act like a mobster? Well, that's because he was. According to Cosa Nostra News, Peter had been working as a broker for the Bonanos, one of the five Italian families that dominate crime in New York. He even had a secret nickname, Peter Pasta, and made $15,000 a week. But he didn't have a dime for his restaurant. Or did he? I'd rather not know. That whole life of luxury came to an end in 2008, when he got into a fight with his brother-in-law, resulting in a restraining order against Peter. But if that wasn't enough, his brother-in-law spread copies of the restraining order, along with the rumor that Peter was an FBI informant, causing him to be kicked out of the Bonanos and disowned by his own family, the Pellegrinos. Incidentally, by that time, his father Yogi had already died, possibly of natural causes. And in the Cosa Nostra article, it is revealed that he used to advise his son to stay away from the mafia. Perhaps that incident ultimately doomed the wrath of his own family. He was jobless after that, but we're talking about an event almost 15 years ago. So Peter must have gotten his life back on track. If something really bad had happened, I think we would know about it by now. Also, I found a comment on reality TV updates from a person who claims he saw Peter quite healthy in Middle Village, Queens, last year. As of today, the former location of Peter's is occupied by a restaurant called Post Office Cafe, which boasts a 3.7 star rating on Yelp and is considered popular in the local community. As for Tina, the only thing we can find out about her is on Facebook, where I was able to find that she lives in Queens, but there is not a single mention of Peter. If I had to guess anything, it's that the siblings' relationship broke up completely. But that's a theory based on little evidence. I'm glad Tina looks happy, and I hope Peter, wherever he is, is also doing well, and he is living a legit and healthy lifestyle.